Hello, everyone, and welcome to my review of Mary Poppins. I give this film 10 out of 10 spoons full of sugar. This movie means a lot to me. My mother's never been a movie person throughout her life. I mean, I could probably use my fingers to count how many movies she's been to. Uh, Star Wars 7 and 8, National Treasure 1 and 2, Avengers, Saving Mr. Banks, Sully, Toy Story 3, and Pirates of the Caribbean. I think that's it. I Yeah, I think that's it. And that isn't me trying to dig on her. Obviously, I love her, and she's one of my favorite human beings on this planet. But she doesn't like the medium of entertainment in terms of movies. She likes TV. You know, QVC, uh, House Hunters International, Triple D, stuff like that. But movies aren't really her thing. Except for this one. So when I went to review this, because Mary Poppins Returns is coming soon, so I wanted to review Mary Poppins, um, I had two thoughts in mind when I was thinking about this. The first being, I had to review this like it was the year it came out, which was 1964. I can't compare it to modern day films, that's unfair. The second, and that's, this is the hardest one, is trying to unattach myself from this movie. My mother's not much of a singer either, but she would sing once in a while to the songs on this movie. Yes, you already know my score is a perfect 10 out of 10, which at this time I don't think I have done on this channel, but that is still me being unattached to this film. This film is the first film in terms of feature length for Julie Andrews. It won her a Golden Globe and an Academy Award. Actually, Aubrey Hepburn was supposed to be starring in this film, according to my research when I was trying to review this film. And Miss Hepburn took down the role to star in My Fair Lady. Uh, Dick Van Dyke is also in the show, and Disney personally went after him because he liked the Dick Van Dyke show. The character and somewhat of the movie was based on P.L. Travers' books of the same name, Mary Poppins. And I'm not going to get into the whole debacle of how that came into existence because someday I do want to review Saving Mr. Banks and that's the entire plot of the film. Uh, but just know there was some old school controversy about this. This is the only film that was to get nominated for an Academy Award for Best Picture when Walt Disney was alive. This was his crowning jewel in many people's eyes. This also has 100% on Rotten Tomato right now. According to Box Office Mojo, this movie made over $102 million dollars back in its day, including one sing-along version that came out for a very short bit. But adjusted for inflation, that's all over $300 million, which to give it a modern comparison, that's about the same thing as the Meg, and the Meg is the, I believe the 10th, it's going to be the 10th biggest movie this summer of 2018, which when you're stacking it up against Deadpool 2, Avengers, Infinity War, Incredibles 2, that's a pretty solid feat. And that's what Mary Poppins would have done, adjusted for the most part, if she came out the same time. Well, different audiences though. This movie is full of beautiful songs, beautiful scenery that was painted actually in a lot in Burbank, California. They were never actually filming in London. It was always painted backdrops. Or in terms of the animated things, you know, obviously that was painted in a different sense back then. This film had amazing special effects. And that's just not my opinion. It won the Academy Award for Best Visual Effects, Original Song, and Film Editing, along with Julie Andrews Award. That's impressive. And I think the core of this film, yeah, I'm not going to go into its plot because really the plot is just getting the kids to reconnect with their father and the father to reconnect with the kids. But the plots, you know, in old school days, plot wasn't what we think of plot nowadays. You know, a modern day film has a lot of plot points that'll make you feel a lot of different emotions. It's very complex, a lot of moving pieces and such. Mary Poppins is simply kids being neglected by their father, not in a terrible way, just a working man kind of forgetting that his children are there and that he needs a nanny and the nanny just happens to be a magical person that's Yes, harsh at times, but not super harsh, just what a parent or guardian or nanny needs to be at times. A lot of love and a little bit of humiliation to get you back into place. And she helps the kids. She helps the father, too. Yeah, the father almost got fired from his job, but he got rehired because he showed emotion for his family. 
I think just simply just deep down on the plot, it's just a man coming back to terms and realizing that he loves his family above all else. And at the end, when they're flying the kite and Mary Poppins leaves, that's just beautiful cinematography. It's fairly short, but, you know, movies back then weren't three hours or two and a half hours long like most MCU films are nowadays or most any film is nowadays unless it's a low budget one. But it's entertaining throughout. There's entertaining songs. There's set pieces. Dick Van Dyke and Julie Andrews are just fantastic in it. Even the kids aren't too bad. And that's back then. All in all, it's a film f that means a lot to me because of how much my mother enjoyed it. And it means a lot to a lot of people because it was, it was their first intro into the magic that is Disney. Uh, yeah, I'm a weird man for enjoying Disney as much as I do. But it's because I still have a kid inside me. This magic of this film is what makes me giddy when I go to Disney World or Disneyland. There's something beautiful about seeing a kid smile and like having a good time. Yeah, 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 you can say it's capitalism and all the kids are, you know, all they want is more stuff and you can see them complain more often than not. You really go there and you see a face of a kid, just pure happiness. That's what I remember seeing the first time watching Mary Poppins, was just happiness. It was just a fun time. It didn't need random explosions or fighting, you know, faceless minions. It was just a fun time. A adventure tale. With full songs. To this day, I still have trouble with supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. I just have trouble. I have trouble with words, as you already can see in most of my videos. I have a problem, but it's still, like, I don't get upset by it. I still think it's fun to try and pronounce it. Everyone has trouble with it. Some people can just say it flawlessly and kudos but it's stuff like that 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 lasting effect of a lasting thing of a movie you know it adds to it yeah I said I'm gonna review this like it was the year 1964 but I'm just talking in that respect in terms of directing what cameras they had available acting special effects etc I'm still gonna put the lasting effects into the actual review if I'm 60 and I never reviewed The Dark Knight, you know, I'm going to give it more points for its lasting effect on the superhero genre. Or movies like Fantasia, The Wizard of Oz, all these films will withstand the test of time for a very long time because of what they were and what they did and when they came. And I think Mary Poppins is one of those films. So all in all, I think this is a film that every kid or parent can enjoy together. It's a good, easy one to get into. It's a very, very GG movie. And it's just fun. It's great for everyone. 10 out of 10. But as always, my name is Clark Addison. I review entertainment. I do this all because I care. And let me know what you guys think of this movie. Was this a family classic movie that you guys would watch every other week or maybe once a month? You know, with some popcorn on a blanket in the in front of your TV. Or is it something you haven't seen yet and you want to see with your kids? Let me know. And I'll see you guys in the next one.